right, there we are. All right. Good evening, everyone. I'm I'm noticing uh, in OBS it, it it's looking like my video is lagged. Uh, for some reason, I don't know if it's going to be coming out that way on the stream or not. I you, when you were saying some stuff up a few weeks ago, yours was like that. Yeah, I don't know why though. Your, yours seems fine now. I'm curious what it looks like on the stream end. If if it's out of sync, it is out of sync. Well, I don't know, I don't know how to how to fix that. Yeah, I don't know if there's much I can do about that. Let me let me close and reopen the Logitech. The I mean, my software. my camera's looking very is looking good, but yours looks like it's, it has a lot of noise in it. Well, I think that's just how it is. Let's see if it's ever going to come. There it is. Uh, I don't know. It's, it's hard to tell. Oops. It's still it's still Wait pretty on. noisy. Oh, I, I wasn't cur concerned about the noise, but. Yeah. But I mean, once once you start the game, anyways, it's, it's so be small. Real tiny. Yeah. 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 So how is everybody doing tonight? Yeah. So I feel like this is like maybe the first time ever that we, we fulfilled our like promises of what would release <laughs> during the week, during the week, you know, from the previous stream, mm -hmm. we're like, Oh, there's going to be a video on the Evercade. And then like two days later, is going to be Analog Frontiers Part Two. Yeah, uh, and there response was. is very good to to uh, Analog Frontiers for sure. Yeah, I hope that it was. I hope that it was worth the wait. I, and I, I think, I think that I think that th Part Three will be worth worth the wait, but it won't be. It's is is long. There's there's no. The wait is not going to be long, but the, is as long. But the episode is going to be quite a bit longer. Yeah. Part three might be the longest one. Part part three and four are going to be the longest ones. Right. Yeah. yeah. And, and not only was, was there the stuff on our channel, but th we were also in John Linneman's final fight video. We were also in John Linneman's final fight video. And I shot something uh, with, uh, with Chris from Classic Gaming Quarterly that it will be appearing on his channel soon-ish. I'm not sure how long it's going to take him to edit it, but I mean, it's very possible it could be this week or not. I mean, it's, who knows? I uh, saw so we got a uh, $2 from Ven Venisaria saying uh, Analog Frontiers Part 2 was fantastic. Awesome job. Thank you. And you, you did. Did you notice that you made a little cameo in the the crowd shot <laughs> at the uh, toward the, the toward the very end of it? Yeah. Yeah. And I, I also I, I also got a name drop in the new game sack episode. Oh oh really? I haven't seen it. What what's yeah. it about? <laughs> uh it's about crowdfunded games. Oh, and I okay. I really pushed him to play Freedom Planet a long time ago. Mm. And he mentioned that. That's cool. Was that crowdfunded? Uh yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so, so I, I it, it feels good to have that out there. Yes, that analog yes. frontiers. Yep. Whew, uh, so it feels good. To, <laughs> feels good to have the 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 Evercade. I, there was not a lot of anticipation at all for it, and I think that's one of the reasons we released those very quickly, like very quickly, close to each other. I, but you know, I thought it was a well. I thought the Evercade was a well done video. Um, yeah, I don't think it did as bad as you thought it would either. I mean, right. it didn't do amazing numbers or anything, but you know. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it didn't. It definitely, it definitely did better than I thought it was going to. Oh, and apparently, we are both wearing great shirts. I do oh, enjoy yeah. this shirt. I've worn a lot of <laughs> videos before. Huh, and so, this week, oh, starting, on. starting tomorrow, I'll be diving into doing a video on the the gbs control oh yeah 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 that's, that's pretty exciting i'm looking forward to learning more about that 
I, 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 I should I should find some way to appear in that video because there's a lot of people commenting on Analog Frontiers Part Two, saying like, Where, "Where's Try? Like, is he is he okay? Did, did he leave and I didn't know?" <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, people who don't watch the streams, but uh, or or and probably don't watch the ad lib episodes either. Because I mean, the funny thing is when I was writing Analog Frontiers. Like most of it was written last year. And my mm. idea was like, you know what? Like, I think I can edit all five of these. Uh, and uh, like we can release them one after another, one a week, five weeks in a row. And like looking back, like, what was I even thinking? Like that would have just been impossible to get them all done before releasing. Like, I just, I could not have handled it. Uh, <laughs> but, the, the you know, so early on in the writing process, I said, hey, like, would you want to alternate hosting duties on these? Like, I'm writing them, but, like, I'll do parts one, three, and five, and you do parts two and four. And I said, because I, I feel like it's just going to be too much me. Uh, and, uh and we're like, yeah, so, but the I irony is just because of when this episode released, like there had been two solo Corey episodes followed by Corey and Analog Frontiers part two, even though I edited yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, whew, I sure did edit it. <laughs> that was some work. I saw there was uh, two dollars from Henry Clark saying "Evening Andore of M Lake" and the other half. <laughs> you know, my one of my favorite things in the uh, in John's Final Fight episode was that every time Audie's voice appeared, like he had a different. You know, it was uh, you know the the world champion of Bubsy. Uh, yeah. You know, the first one was just video game historian, and then it was like you know CDI purveyor of cdi or something like that and then it yeah. was like uh like clax aficionado which he hates clax <laughs> well i haven't actually watched the entire final fight i kind of skimmed it yesterday i i was saying to you that i didn't even i didn't even turn on my computer yesterday <laughs> i was i was doing doing housework and hang and like just spending time with family. And I didn't, did not turn my computer on at all yesterday and didn't even today until, until around five o'clock. Uh, so I haven't even watched it. I skimmed it, but it does not seem like it would. He, so uh final fight streetwise is covered, but I don't know if he talked about the versions of final fight. that are unlockable within, uh, within final fight streetwise, because, uh, um, I can't remember there. There was some version that he covered that was like 20 frames per second and was like, it was like all of the sprites were like bilinear filtered, except okay. they still had sharp edges. Was that right. it? Okay. That, that, that's the, that's the PS2 version. It was it is, it is, it is the worst version. It was it is, yeah. hilarious. It is, no, it is. It is so bad. I mean, I, <laughs> I, he asked me to uh, to unlock it because I hadn't. I I have the the PS2 version, and he's like, I don't have it right now. Can you see if you can uh, like download a save or something like that to unlock it? And I did, and I was like, I can't believe how bad this is. It's, it's it is like it's hilarious. <laughs> I, I believe I believe my my exact words. I can't believe this is real. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm gonna go ahead and start playing uh, Shovel Knight here. I. I, I think I had mentioned on the stream that I was, um, uh, I, I, you know, pop, popped it in to capture it. Um, and, uh, like, I just like had forgotten how freaking good that first level music is. <laughs> yeah. And, and King Knight seemed really fun to play. So... I was like, you know, I should stream that. And then I forgot to stream it last time it was my turn. And this week I remembered. So this King like force King force. Yeah. The first one was back loggy because uh, that's as many characters as you can have. Uh, but that was, you know, the, the back loggery uh, oh, VH, yes. uh, how to beat VHS tape 
Like this was the file. That was, you actually saw me entering, I believe. I think you see me entering yep. that file name. Cause, Cause this is, I, I am playing the Wii U version. I tried to use the NES Classic uh, Edition controller through a Wii remote. And like, no matter what I did, the button mapping just like failed to work correctly, unfortunately. Like even when I like edited the button mapping. But yeah, so the, the only DLC I've actually played is Plague Force, which, uh, or Plague Knight, <laughs> uh, Plague mm -hmm. of Shadows, which as you can see my file on there is 10 hours. I'm actually rather surprised wow. by that. Uh, and I like, I made a file for Spectre Knight, but haven't played it. But tonight we're going to play King Knight. So. Sounds good. Here we go. I, I Because of how long my save on the Plague Knight is, I'm, I'm kind of not expecting to finish this tonight. I mean, it's kind of amazing how long it took them to get all of the, the entire game out get, or yeah. like all the expansions. Yeah. And yeah. like I read that they like, I mean, it kind of sound like <laughs> kind of sound like they were us where it's like, Oh, they just kept coming up with these like grander and grander and grander ideas. And yeah. just like, just kept, just kept having to push it, push it to be bigger and bigger and bigger. But it's like, it's, they were, they worked on this game for a long time. I mean, I mean, obviously they made, made good money on this game. So I'm glad that they've been able to, you know, spend so much time dedicated to it. Yeah. I, 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 it'd be nice to I see what they do Switch next. Version. though. I bought, I bought the physical Switch version that has this on it. I should, on. I should get that sometime. Like I've got the physical Wii U version. I'm just playing the download because I was a Kickstarter backer. So I've, I've got the download on my system. So I only have the physical Wii U just to have it, but yeah, it would be nice to get the, um, well, I'm glad they, they have made decent money on it because when you think about it, I mean, when was the Kickstarter like 2013? Oh no. It, because it was like, we it, released, it, it, we released our video on this in 2014. Right, right. So I guess that they, it, it had been the works for a, for a while. So it was probably like 2012, if not like 2011. I I don't even know. It was so King Knight like kind of has this Wario charge, and then like after he hits something, he goes into a like a like a spin attack. So he like like bounces up and then can like bounce multiple times off of enemies and like his spin will like destroy blocks underneath them. He's, he's, he's unique and, and fun to play. I, I don't remember what Plague Knight plays like from the, the little test I did, <laughs> but King Knight definitely struck me as more like, oh, that's fun. So people are talking a little bit about the, the, uh, Analog NT, uh, yeah, mini, uh, Noir, which I, is I gotta crazy. say I was rather shocked. Uh, I I do gotta say though, seeing what a different system it is though, I I my skepticism I over whether they're going to have the cores is going is renewed. Yes, and also I feel like they wouldn't put all that work in for a single run of a system like that. I feel like there's going to be a cheaper mini version, more, a, a cheaper version of it. That's that looks more in line with the, the super NT and the, the mega. S. Whoa, what's this? Um, I can understand like the, you know, people being pretty upset about it though. I mean, there's a lot of people, they said, Early on, there was going to be no differences. It's, it's the same thing that you that you know and love. As the as how, I think that's how they how they worded it. So I'm th I bet you a lot of people avoided doing it, like buying it. Yeah, I mean, I'll admit I'm pretty jealous. Yeah, like I I would have definitely considered ordering one. Uh, 
if I knew it was gonna have like interpolation and stuff. Like it's got it's got the same features as the Mega SG and and he may. But at the same time, you know, hey, you know, it's good to not spend money, I guess. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. yeah, I mean, it. And also, I was kind of confused. Does it not out. I, 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 To be honest, I didn't look at the information all that in depth. Um, Did it. Uh, does it not have. Um, Uh, does it not have uh, native support for um, analog out? Do you have to use the DAC? No, no, it does. Okay. It does. Uh, it And it can do simultaneous output. Oh. HDMI and, and analog. Oh, oh, okay. And, I bet. And, and, you, and you can use a, use a DAC to have dual analog if you want. Oh, wow. This world map looks a lot different. We got we got five five pounds from InGen UK. Thank you. So any tips on getting PC Engine Mini or Switch HDMI into UK uh, SCART CRT TV for scanline goodness? Looking forward to Treasure Special now. Now the Analog Frontiers Two is is out. Uh, I don't feel like it would be worth using those systems to go into a CRT unless you use. Uh, I mean, I guess if you're trying to use like maybe like a downscaler. Yeah, somehow. like the the GBS like, would be well, like. The GBS downscales, but won't downscale HDMI. But I'm talking like if you get, I mean, I don't know if the. You could, uh, the well, you could get a shit. you could get a HDMI to. Uh, actually, that's something you, you 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 probably don't have one, do you? A, what? A HDMI to VG like a lagless HDMI. Oh, I do. Okay. I do have I do have that one. It's the same one that Bob has, but it might not have the same chip inside of it. Mm. I was surprised because I saw it in his video, and I was like, "Oh, you know, I have. To, I think I have that." So, um, I mean, I'm I'm not sure if that would be the if there's like really a good way to do that they would be status satisfactory they would look exactly how you you would want it to look right i mean it I mean, it might be possible but the thing is like let's say you were to play oh shovel knight on the you know through that the chances of the scan lines actually lining up with the pixels are very slim I yes i mean if you're using like a pc and you can like output it 240p that way, using like it, like the what is it, the arcade VGA card or something like that, that is that that would be different, I think, than just downscaling. But I mean, it, okay. So MKR is saying I've used GPS control to downscale switch to 480p. I mean, I'm 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 the downscaling aspects of the GPS controller are the things that I is the thing that I'm actually the most interested in. Yeah. So, so the. Uh, um... I mean that that's like I I will I'll definitely look into that. I'll look into that for that this video to see if that if, if you know that could be an, an option for a lot of people. For these they have these mini systems to see how they look. You should is the one that uh, is the downscaler that Bob has is it the um what's the brand on? Oh, it's like a I don't know what the brand is. Like Por Porta? Mm. The, the one that I, I, I've got two actually, and the one that I've used the most was one that Dan actually recommended for, um, uh, he recommended it for the, uh, uh, I'm drawing a blank on the name, the, uh, the time sleep. Oh, right, right. And I like it a lot more than uh, the one that I used a while back because I always felt like the black levels looked a little off on that. But I haven't, mm. I haven't really tried, tried it in a while. Yeah, well, I'll definitely get into doing stuff with that. I mean, so MK Iron Fist is saying that uh, I set my switch to 40p and scaled it to 240p. It works great. 
That's that's pretty cool. I mean, that's. But like, I feel like for like, a lot like, of people like, that like, would be that would definitely be a, a sell it, like a selling factor. For so them. It down to 240p. Mm-hmm. Wow. Does uh do, do like the SNES and NES games like did the scan lines line up correctly? Gonna be, uh, that'll be something I'll, I'll I mean, I, I believe they're a 4X scale, are they not? I, I can't quite remember. Yeah, I don't remember either. I, I think that they were, yes. I wonder about, like, NES Classic Edition. You know? Yeah, I mean, I think that that's, that's, this is all stuff I'm going to try with it. Because that is certainly a pretty huge use for people they would like to, to run these old systems on crts oops i didn't mean to go back in here so uh mk iron fist if you're if you're on discord uh send me send me a message and that way like what as i'm testing different things out over the next several days I can I can ask you if you've if you've tried anything. Yeah, downscaling episode it would be it would be huge. It would be really, really exciting. Um, I saw we had a. Uh, I saw I saw uh, Nick Mueller in the chat. Oh, haven't seen Nick in a little while. Good, good, good to see you here. <laughs> my my favorite part of Analog Frontiers Two is uh, is is Voltar saying, "We're gonna make it." <laughs> that that is my favorite part. You'll, I, I laughed you'll, the first time I saw it. You'll, 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 you'll see this and say, wow, this doesn't look so bad, guys. We're going to make it. <laughs> Every once in a while, I feel like you can hear, like, just a little bit of Solid Snake and, and everything yeah. Voltar says. Like, the end, the end of his voice as it trails off. Like, sometimes there's just a bit of a, we're going to make it. <laughs> he was the first person we interviewed for it. Yeah. He was. I, I saw a few people ask, like, how'd you go to put on a shirt? <laughs> <laughs> he was like, he was like dressed up with like, he was like wearing slacks and everything. And, yeah. Or I, maybe it was jeans. I forget. Yeah. Ch check that clip of him, that cheesy clip of him walking into his office uh, and taking off the sunglasses, <laughs> whatever he was wearing then. That's what he was wearing. Unfortunately, we just didn't have a, a lot of time there to get like a lot of footage of him like modding and stuff right um, and you know like it's like i said we, it was the first thing we shot so we were really trying to figure out we were setting all this stuff up for an interview for the first time there well i mean we had shot interviews before but it was the first time we were like establishing the style for that series which right. involved as you may have noticed a lot of the interviews have um a lot of interviews have uh, a, a second secondary cam on a slider. That was like right after we got our sliders and it was all like, ooh, shiny. And we wanted to, uh, do you know, an interview we want to do interviews with it and it works, but I don't, I don't want to do it again because yeah, yeah. in reality, there's like such, I, I was a little more optimistic than I should have been about what degree of that overall motion was going to be usable in terms of like, you know, how much of it is in focus. Uh, you know, so, but it, it did come in handy at, at yeah. times. I mean, and sometimes even on the main shot, they'll get out of focus just a little bit, but you know, I always, I like to look at, other documentaries or even, you know, full on just, just narrative movies and look at how many shots are out of focus. And it makes me feel good. 
Because <laughs> it's, it's more than you'd think. Uh, I'm always we, we looking a, at that and nitpicking, you know. We had a $2 donation from uh, from Warren Hokey. Thank you. Saying, uh, if emulating, fix PS1 texture wobble or leave it. Um, I mean... I it depends on what you're playing. Yeah, I mean, to be honest, I, I'm... I'm not overly familiar with any methods that... I mean, I, I'm, I'm sure there are methods, but I'm... I am not an expert on emulation in general. <laughs> so, I don't... I don't know if... Like, I, you know, I mean... Part of it for me, like, I, oops, I just like seeing the texture wobble because it like gives me assurance that it's like behaving as it should, you know? <laughs> yeah, I mean, some games it's pretty out of control. The one I always felt it was most out of control in is the is the first Tenchu. Mm. That one has has some of the some of the craziest texture wobble I've seen. Uh, I mean, personally. I, I mean, I don't, I don't think about it all that much, oh, no. but I, I mean, I could see if I was just playing, playing something, you know, I, I'd remove it, you know, uh, I don't if know. you're emulating, you might as well, you I, might as well. Do I, it. I, I, if you're emulating, sure, I guess so. But to me, it's like, it's, it's part of the system, you know? Yeah. Hey guys, there's Smoke Monster in the chat. Right. Well, I saw that Smoke Monster, I saw a tweet earlier that an updated version of the Super Game Boy capable firmware for the SC Des NES was released, I think, wow. either today or yesterday. Uh, I saw the tweet today. So I'll be, be getting that. And it mentioned that it has Game Boy save states are possible. I don't know if that means that there will be oh, eventually no. I just Super NES save states. That pit. Uh, she continues to say, saying, it's been a recent development in PS1 emulation to completely eliminate vertex jittering and texture wobble by rendering the 3D data in a new renderer. Oh. That's pretty neat. <clears throat> I'm, I'm glad you enjoyed it, Smoke Monster. Are you... And I'm sure, I'm sure you're extremely excited for the next one. Yep, <laughs> the next one. Oh, he's he's seen the script. <laughs> yeah. Uh, for those that don't know, the next one is is about emulation. I mean, the the way that the way that I've liked to explain it is because it's more than just emulation or FPGAs or software emulation or, or it's, it's it's more than just that. Like the way that I have phrased it when explaining it to people is it is about preservation and having an experience with these games and consoles in the absence of one or more pieces of the original. So uh, in in this case, you know, that could be in the absence of the game, in which case flash cartridges, or it could be in the absence of just the original hardware, in which case AVS, NT Mini, Super NT, Mega SG, um, because you have the original game, but not the original system, or in the absence of both, which is software emulation, or Mr. Um, right. And also an aspect that I think people will not be expecting. I, you know, part of me was like, oh, I wonder if that should have been this episode. But no, no. I'm not going to say <laughs> what it is, though. But it's uh, it's it, it's going to be the it's very the first, part, the first part of the episode. Yeah, probably the first like seven or nine minutes is actually looking at one person. Uh that is an angle of preservation that people maybe don't think about. Well, I mean, I, I don't think it's, I don't think there's anything wrong with telling people what it is. No, I want it to be a surprise because I don't, okay. I don't think people will expect it. 
All right then. Uh, who are the, who are some of the other people that are in the in the next one? Because uh, new people get revealed in each one. Right. Stee is in the next one. Stee Kulov. <laughs> um, it's been a while since I looked at the script, so I can't quite remember. But is is, a... is Stee the, the, the Andre or Andre of, of HD Retrovision? <laughs> or how, how does that work? I mean, <laughs> uh, who else? Uh, I can't remember if there's anyone else new in it. I mean, there were two, there were three new people in this one. But, you know, people who were in part one, such as Frank Cifaldi, mm -hmm. Jeremy Parrish. They, um, they, they resurface. They reappear. So every episode is going to have a different cast. Yeah. Uh, Mike Chi is, is not interviewed. He, well, he is kind of, but it was, it was a very brief interview. There, there are actually several people that were, we, we had an opportunity as, as you might've noticed by the footage with a lot of people, uh, at the very end of the episode. Uh, we, we, we had opportunity, we had access to a number of people that we hadn't previously had access to. Them. And, um, well, specifically, I mean, a big, big part of that was, was our team. Yes. Which but like, we, like we set aside time, like to take him to Corey's house, his old house and, mm -hmm get him separately. But then like, we kind of did like rapid fire. I mean, we would have loved to have done like, you know, hour and a half long interviews with all of those guys, but we kind of just did a, like kind of just, just shotgun, you know, just, you know, 10, 15 minute interviews with the help of the eight bit Duke, um, right. with a number of people. And those sh short interviews are all going to be in part five. Got it. So Mike Chi will be briefly in part five. Marcus Hiankari will be briefly in part five. Tim Worthington will be briefly in part five. They're all going to appear in some capacity in part right. five. So uh, we got a we got a two pound donation from Pedro Lack saying, "How about Analog Frontiers four in space?" <laughs> we're, we're, we're saving the space aspect for part nine. Yes. <laughs> so, Analog, as Red Wolf, was, Analog Frontiers 9, Bob Takes Manhattan. <laughs> Bob Takes Manhattan! <laughs> <laughs> so it's going to be, I guess it'll be Analog Frontiers X. In space. In space. Com Commodore 64 is in space. <laughs> Uh, but for those wondering, there is going to be, there's five parts total. Right. Uh, part, part three is obviously like emulation and what Tri just explained. Part four is a, uh, very concentrated look on the, uh, at, at, at the life and, and also, work. and, and work of, uh, of, Ke of Kebtris. Right. And then part five is about the, the overall community. Uh, right, so, I mean, a lot of the, like a lot of the people. We're not. We are not doing these interviews now. A lot of these interviews were were shot over the course of like the last two years. Yeah. Uh, and we're not really shooting anything else for it. So I mean, there might be people that have have shown up, it, or have become more prominent in the scene since we started shooting it. It's just that we had to eventually just. We had to call it somewhere, or else it'd never get done. Like I would have right. loved if we could have included. Um, Steve Nutter from, yeah. you know, RetroTech. And, you know, you saw a good bit of footage of him in in the episode. And I wish we could have given him a full interview, but it's just like we had, you know, we had already interviewed Jose as like our CRT expert. And I just didn't feel there was like room 
for like a full interview with two CRT focused people. Right. And like, I actually did interview Steve at the end of our little visit. And the, the tragedy is I forgot. It was like, it was like kind of a spur of the moment thing. Like we weren't, Necessarily planning to do an interview at first. Uh, yeah, he's gonna he'll, he'll be in the uh, the fixing CRTs video. The the CRT geometry yeah. video. Yeah. Like we have shot a significant amount of material for that with him specifically. Yeah. Yeah. So like I was like okay like I I want like and we mic'd him up while he was working on that. I mean he's like kind of talking through it. I just I it kills me that like I lost the audio for that full interview we did with him but yeah uh but still we got a lot of material with him and it it came in very handy very handy for analog frontiers part two because like to be honest jose was actually kind of a spur of the moment interview as well um yes. because when we met like we knew about him uh but like the first night we got to new york uh we uh met him at an arcade and we were aware of him, like, through Bob's stuff. But they were like, oh, man, like, we really should interview him. And so we mm-hmm. arranged to meet up. Um, really early the next day. Or, no, I think, it was, I think it, was, world. it was two mornings later, I think. Right. Or, well, it was, it was no. before we, we had to go to Retro World Expo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So we, uh, so we, so it was, that was a pretty quick interview as well. And obviously we didn't have time to shoot him like working on anything. And right. Bob later, you know, you might notice like he had just like a goatee in our interview, but then he has like a full beard and some, a little bit of B-roll. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and like, that was because Bob another time. Uh, shot B-roll of him working, but like right. I needed a lot more CRT working B-roll. So how all that footage with Steve happened, uh, he visited Matt Lisi in North Carolina and Matt Lisi is, um, uh, you know, one half or technically one third of uh, Insurrection Industries, you know, who was in the, the first part of Analog Frontiers. And uh, so all that footage was actually in, in Matt's Matt's uh, Insurrection Industries lab, <laughs> mm-hmm. um, uh, shooting him recapping Matt's uh, uh, tw- uh, twenty M two M D U, which was very similar to the PVM that Jose was describing recapping. So that that really worked well. Uh, we got a nine ninety nine donation oh, from wow. uh, from Bill Russell. Thank, Thank you. you. The really cool solid snake avatar. It says Analog Frontiers was excellent and the Evercade video. Wink. I mm-hmm. uh, checked every day and began to suspect Tri lied about getting it done this week. <laughs> <laughs> uh, any consideration for a physical release when uh, Analog Frontiers wraps? Uh, and yes, yeah, we are planning on doing a Blu ray release of the entire series. Mm hmm. Probably it'll be on two discs. I I'm suspect guessing. it's gonna have to be. Yeah. To be the quality we'll want. I mean, unless we do like a dual layer. I mean, it, I I'd have to really look into it. I mean, uh, I'm sure it's possible, but I think it would be a lot of fun. Um, but uh, we're gonna be going back, and also we have those those M2 documentary discs that we need to get packaging done for, and. We're going to be getting back into that this week. I'm going to talk to the person who's going to be packaging them this week so that we can uh, get those out for people. Because we have I, we have something like 300 copies of it, I think, on disc. Maybe yeah. maybe 250, 250 to 300 of those that we, can, like that we can sell. Those, and they're just the, the same ones that were included with the limited edition of Battle Garaga from Limited Run. So... But we just need to get them separately packaged because in in that limited edition they were put in a uh, Saturn style jewel case, which means that there's no real packaging. So we're we're taking the the discs that we got are just on a spindle. So we need to get those actually put into packages. Uh, we got a uh, I'm, I'm assuming it's a uh, one Australian do- dollar from Sheepy Tina. Thank, Thank you. you. With, with no message. But thank you. We got a $5 donation from Don't Panic saying, have any 
real arcade or one-ups ever put together a may, may have have any real arcade or uh, one-ups ever or ever put together a MAME cabinet? Um, I've had a arcade cabinet of Space Harrier previously. Um, I've not put together a MAME cabinet, although I do. I mean, have several boards. I do want to get like an Astro City cab. I have I have a perfect place for it. Off in the corner. Here. I, I would love to to. I would love to mod a Mister into that One Up Arcade sometime that I have. Like that'd be that'd be pretty cool. Um, apparently it's, it's called, it's pronounced dollar do <laughs> It's pronounced dollar <laughs> Um, people are saying, oh, you should put Analog Frontiers on VHS, and... Maybe. I mean... We could. I, I, I like, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna put the whole thing on, on VHS, but I mean... We can make it like a collector's I, 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 edition. Not, not above, maybe you can take different segments of it and make an Analog Frontiers of the movie. <laughs> and put those put that on VHS. Mm -hmm. That seems like a lot of extra work though. Uh but yeah, I mean those those VHS tapes that I have here are I started making the version of of the how to beat tapes that I was gonna I mean I guess I could get back to doing that. I just lost all track of doing it since since moving. I mean, I can I can dub several VHS tapes. Like, I can do I can do four at a time with the setup that I have here. I have a stack of VCRs and a um, a distribu distribution amplifier. Uh, how do I dub the VHS tapes? I take the file and put it on a PlayStation Three and run the PlayStation Three in composite out to the distribution amplifier, which then sends it to four different VCRs. Uh, I put a big, big, uh, probably like a 10 second uh, roll of black at the very beginning of the video file. So I I play it, and then once the, uh, once the play icon disappears, then it will, um, then I hit record on all of them. And I put like a whole bunch of black at the very end so that the tapes will end before it stops. Before the video stops. There'll be there'll be no more room to le left on the on the tape to record. I mean I could I could technically do the entire analog frontiers. Uh, on a single VHS tape. Oh, I screwed up. As long as it's under six hours, but it's going to be one of the oh, wait. the uh, like a, like a, the, the long play or LP or SLP. It would have to be that, which might 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 add to it, maybe. But something like that, I wouldn't be able to reformat it for the like the four by three screen. So it'd have to be it'd have to be a letter box. I don't know. Maybe I, maybe I would do. Maybe I could do like fifty copies of of it on VHS of the entire series in SLP. I could I could do eight of them a day. Uh, we got a. Uh, four ninety nine from uh, from Andrew Andrew F Andrew Fiore. Thank you. Saying your DF Retro Final Fight appearances were so cool to see. Can you speak to what you contributed to the video? Uh, well, try did the whole uh, bit about the the one up arcade stuff. And if you want to hear more thoughts that he had of it, like kind of impressions at the time, there is a video in our bonus material list where it's like him setting up the setting it up and then giving some impressions of it and it's like it's like a like a 30 minute video maybe more uh and of course like i did the the on camera thing but i also 
I recorded a, a whole bunch of footage. I recorded the entire arcade version because I have an arcade PCB, so I was able to use my super gun and record it. And uh, let's see, I recorded the PS2 version that's like in Streetwise and also in the, uh, the Capcom Classics collection. Uh, what else did I do? Um, I I have I have the Streets of Fire soundtrack on vinyl. I shot some B-roll of that. I shot some B-roll of the, the arcade PCB. Um, take a look. I did. Uh, I don't know if you used any of the magazine material that I shot. Okay, so I, Capcom Collection Volume One, uh, a little bit of footage from of, uh, of 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 Maki in in Capcom vs SNK Two, uh, Final Fight Revenge, I, I uh, Final Fight Double Impact I recorded, and uh, yeah, it looks like the and, and Streetwise. Yeah, yeah, I mean, the, the arcade footage looked really, really good. I was very happy the way it looked. Uh, we got a $5 donation from uh, Christopher Miller saying for Analog <laughs> Analog Frontiers Part 2. Well, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Well, we'll see. We'll see what I do with the uh, the VHS. I mean, I, I'm, I, I'm not above, you know, making, you know, like 50 to 100 copies of it. Uh, I'm not sure if he if John talks about the Mister version of it, of the the CPS one core Mister core. In there. Ah, we got a uh, ten reals from uh, Pedroca Severo. Thank you. Saying motion adaptive, motion adaptive versus Bob for interlaced content for best uh, image quality. Well, I, I think that depends. It depends. Uh, I feel like Bob, in, the, the interlacing looks good in the way that it, it does a really good job of giving you the, of giving you the, the, the look of what interlace looks like on a CRT. Uh, but I guess motion adaptive, I guess would be, that would be similar to what the, um, what the Frame Meister does. And, in a lot of cases, I think that that's more preferable for playing on an HD TV. Yeah, people people don't like the look of Bob. I mean, it it. Uh, I mean, I think technically, yeah, it has more detail, but it it doesn't look as pleasing, I guess, especially for like presentation and like a YouTube video or something. And especially if you're using like an IPS screen, you don't want to use yeah. it because it can cause Hopefully, temporary burn in, but burn yeah, in. Yeah, I mean, it causes like weird, like image retention. Yeah, image retention. Uh, I shouldn't say burn. Yeah, it's, it's, I mean, that's the main reason I don't use it on my, I, even though it probably wouldn't happen on my OLED, I don't want to, I don't really want to give it a chance to, like, do that. So I've always been kind of paranoid about it. Uh, but I mean, it's, it's, it, if you, if you like the look of what interlace looks like on a CRT, then I think that that Bob interlace, Bob the interlace looks, uh, does a good job of approximating that same look. And if you want to show, like it's it's good for in a video when you talk about something running at 480i, you can show Bob the interlacing video, and people be like, oh, I I, under I see what's going on there. Yeah, I mean it's. I I do need to watch the entire final fight video still. Uh, 
I'm, gl I'm glad that the, the unlockable PS2 version was, was covered. Because it, it, it's so bad. Not only that, but I mean, Final Fight Streetwise is real. I think the word that I, I used is that uh, it's really embarrassing. <laughs> I mean, I, I feel like not the people that, that worked on it, or at least even the people that like wrote the dialogue and everything, it's just like it's kind of an embarrassing game. <laughs> oh wait, the deck is the one on the right. Are you, are you trying to, is this a, a change your attributes? No, this is just like for the card mini game, I guess. Oh. Well, thanks, Craig Wan. I'm glad you, glad you enjoyed it. Yeah, it was a lot of work. <laughs> but now we just, just got to keep this momentum going. Yeah. I was saying, I was saying earlier, I mean, I think I was saying a couple weeks ago that if, like, if we like, hit all these videos that, that people really want from us that we've been promising for a long time, which is like completely the intent is to like deliver on a lot of these videos people have been asking for uh, throughout the rest of the year. I mean, I, I feel like hitting 200,000 subscribers could be in, 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 in the, in the cards for the year. I mean, who knows? I mean, if we can get like, like a Mr. Video out, if we can get a, uh, uh, I'd say attributes and it, it should be attributes. I've always said attributes. Uh, but I mean, it's, if, if we can get all these, if we can get like a, like a Dreamcast R RGB 200 episode out, I think that it's, it, it's very possible. Yeah. You know, I was I was talking to, to Dan the other day because um, I was saying, you know, I, should, I need to go around to getting a DC HDMI sometime. And uh, you, um, uh, you have a Wii Duel, right? Yes. But I don't. And I was catching up on the retro RGB podcast and it was mentioned that Dan announced that like, obviously other people can make them, but he announced that he was going to be doing only one more run of we duels. So I, I talked to him the other day and was like, I, <laughs> I have a, I have a Wii. I can send you. <laughs> Cause I definitely want to get one. Yeah. And, so, you need to get a, and you're getting a D, you need to get a DC do or DC digital. Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm going to do that too. Yeah, I mean that it's it's amazing. Or DC HDMI, isn't it called? It's not DC Digital. Well, it's, it's been it's been recently changed to uh, DC Digital. Oh, oh, okay. The, I'm sure the new boards will see say DC Digital. Yeah. The it says DC HDMI on the B roll, but oh yeah, yeah, yeah. But I mean that's it's it was only recently changed. Was there a reason? Um, I I don't know if there was a a specific reason for it other than like maybe using the, the words HD like the letters HDMI uh, would be because I don't I'm not sure if it's like officially like an officially licensed thing I see I'm, I'm sure I'm sure that that, that uh, Nick Mueller could, could elaborate on it <laughs> yeah <laughs> uh, we, got, we got another uh, five five reals from uh, Pedroca Severo thank you thank you saying speaking about image retention is uh, there is some on it, VA panels, even with uh, Rad Tank 2X uh, smoothing. Hmm. Um, I've I've the, never had an issue with with any any of my stuff, but yeah, I mean I I mean I, I just don't do it on the OLED because like I don't want something to happen. But I mean I'm sure that it probably wouldn't. But I don't I don't want to. I have no I have no desire to, to risk it. Um, but I mean, for like, for what is a, a VA panel? Like, is that am I? My brain is not making the connection. 
Uh, VA. A VA panel. I mean, it's just a different type of panel. Oh, okay. Um, if if I remember right, I think it might have VA might have better black levels than IPS, but I think worse viewing angle, or is it the other way around? I, I have to admit, I'm pretty weak on like the distinctions between different LCD panel types. <laughs> oh man Ben Brody's please put me on this spot I don't know if I can do this um oh, I don't know if I can do he says it's five dollars yo but you have to say it in a way where you freestyle rap in a major way I feel like you I, I feel like here, let me hear it in my ear do I have to like read it like that or do I have to like uh, I gotta, I mean... I, I feel like you did the best you could already. What? I feel like you did the best you could already. I, but I don't know if I need to, like, if I needed to make up my own freestyle rap it, I around mean, the five dollars. I mean, I know I wouldn't be capable. Yeah. <laughs> so it sounds like you did pretty good. That's about as freestyle as you get, huh? <laughs> it is. I mean... In, in front of the, the 451 people watching in this chat. That's, that's unfortunately where I'm going <laughs> to... As, as, um, as far as I'm going to get. We, we, did, we also had a $5 donation from Jonathan Hinson. Uh, I want to do this before so I can kind of fall behind on the stream here. Uh, thank you. He says, as, as a uh, cinephile, I had to watch Analog Frontiers twice. <laughs> First time to simply take in the amazing photography. Uh, the second time they actually listened to the interviews, uh, could seriously play it in a, in a muted loop with the soundtrack all day while working. <laughs> wow. I mean, that's... I mean, we, we strive to have our stuff be as, as good looking as possible. Yeah. I mean, you certainly, certainly outdid yourself this time. Oh, Yo, you think so? I mean, there was a lot of those internal console shots. The right. slider shots and stuff. You know, my... Um, my Rhino Arc 2 was broken for several months, and then I, you know, I wasn't able to send it to Rhino for repairs because they weren't open to accept repairs. And uh, I, um, well, I finally could. So during part of production, it was actually I did not have it. I just had the older slider version, which had some limitations. And, uh, uh, but the, the, with the arc two, I can do the macro shots smoothly. I can't do macro shots with the regular slider. Like the arc two motor is just a lot smoother. So I can do the macro shots without looking jittery. I, uh, I saw we had uh, $2 from Colin bear and saying, how's poop, poop, pooty doing. And, uh, oh, I, you, you showed me, a. uh, you sent me a photo of Pootie for the first time. I, I, now, I know. know what Pootie looks like. Yeah, Pootie, Pootie is, the, is, the, is, you guessed it, a poodle. <laughs> a white poodle. And it's like, Pootie! 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 Get over here! Come back here, Pootie! And it's 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 become this thing because Pootie, if, if, if Pootie sees us, we'll come, like, across the street... When, when Pootie's not supposed to. Oh, dear. And gets yelled at. And sometimes I'll be outside and I'll <laughs> I'll see that Pootie's out there. Like, I was out there with my son and I was like, don't move. Mm -hmm. Don't move. It's Pootie. We don't want, we can't, <laughs> I don't want Pootie to see us. And as soon as Pootie would turn around, we'd, like, make a mad dash for the front door. Well, that's just going to make Pootie want to run even more. Well, no, no. As soon as, well, when Pootie is not looking at us. Booty! <laughs> Booty! Whew, I'm falling behind here. We got, we got. Uh, so there's, there's two dollars donation from Ben Brody, but uh, try you, you don't get any of it. No. No. Too bad. Sorry. <laughs> uh, we got, we got two dollars from uh, Aaron Welsh. Thank you. Saying, free Sandy. At free sandy so i mean 
It should be hashtag free Sandy. Sandy is back, but she's very sleepy. She went off yonder to take a nap. Um, and there was a ten dollar donation from Saving the Project. Like, let me go to let me go to Streamlabs, and then we'll we'll catch up. In just a moment, Saving the Project. That will, we'll get your what? comment. Just a second. Oh no. Good. Uh, ten dollars from from saving the product, saying thank you so much for Analog Frontiers too. It was fantastic. Thank you. Uh, Power Man is saying. Uh, did you guys intentionally rag on modern consoles and Analog Frontiers too? Um, um, not necessarily, but you know, one of the questions that we asked, you know, the interviewees was like, um, "Do we like our current? Do you think current gen consoles or recent generation consoles that run hotter?" you know, have active cooling, like, are, is, are we, should we be more worried about how long those are going to last? And some seem to think so. Uh, we got $5 from Craig Wine saying your, your first and third party controllers episodes are awesome. Any chance you'll be covering arcade peripherals for home consoles? Now that I'd love to see. You mean just... Like, I mean, I do plan on doing, like, a, a peripherals episode. Uh, I'm not sure if it'll be... I mean, I could, I could imagine arcade peripherals for home. I mean, perhaps. But, I mean, there's other stuff that we'd, we'd like to do. Like the, uh, like the Dreamcast keyboard and the fishing rod and uh, the, the, the Donkey Kong bongos and stuff like that. But I, those will probably be, like, if we're going to do another one of those, those will be later on in, in the year. Because uh, for the time being, I am trying to dedicate my time to really, like, giving... Uh, dedicating my time to d delivering the episodes that people have been asking for for a long time. And I understand, like, like the GBS control isn't exactly something that people have been asking for, but people have been asking about it recently. And I think that there's a lot of excitement about it. I mean, so that's that that's on the list. Um, Smoke Monster, you're you're talking about IPS, dual IPS screens in a DSi XL. Do do all DSi XLs have uh, dual IPS screens, or how do you know? Because I have I have a DSi XL that I have. I hacked it a while ago, but I'm not really super in love with the way that it runs hacked. I don't know why. Maybe I just haven't, I didn't spend very much time with it. I mean, let me, let me go grab this. I don't know if I actually have to finish all of these. Uh, I don't know if I actually have to finish all of these uh, card battles in this level or if I can move on to a regular gameplay level. Uh, how do you know if it's a... I mean, this looks pretty good. I forgot how to even... get into the custom firmware in there. Oh, first is viewing angles. I mean, if I turn it sideways, I can totally see it. Like, it is it's fine.
Okay, so I can see both screens if I turn it like sideways, like on my planet like this. I can I can see both screens. Um, but I, I don't remember how. Is it? Do I get to use the DSi sound? Is that how I go into how I launch the hack? By going to the DS, DSi sound application. I forgot how I do it. don't remember. Oh, I got a camera? Do I gotta go... Oh, so I have to start the DSi camera, correct? Okay, so that they go to the I go into it looks like I go into the albums. Oh there we go. That's right. I mean I think that I have it all full. I just didn't really mess too much with it. That's it, yeah. It just I did it a while ago and I just forgot. I remember it taking forever to load anything. So I had to switch everything, all the, everything into separate folders, like by, by letter. But I'll, I'll, I'll check out your video. So I, like I said, I hacked it a long time ago, but I just haven't done anything. Yeah, do you have to do this? Because... Is... Did it! Okay, good. I mean, is that how you open up more levels? Uh, I'm, I'm guessing that on this level I have to. I'm guessing this level is just like a card battle level. Uh, I, I suspect I had to finish all that. <laughs> so let's let's see what happens now. We got we got 20, 20 SEKs. Oh, thank from, you. Uh, from Elby. Isn't that a uh, Swiss, maybe? Thousand uh, dollars, but you have to play Sonic One in in fifty hertz. I I could actually do that. Yeah, I'd do that. Uh, I I would do that. I I might actually prefer that. Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm not the biggest Sonic fan. Um, uh, but I I've got I've got a uh. I believe a Asian PAL Mega Drive. And what's interesting about it is that you can put even games that have software region locking in it. Uh, like it can accept every cartridge I own, but it runs them at 50 hertz. So I can do that. I can totally do that. As long as it's not GBA Sonic. I don't know, for a thousand bucks... I don't know. I'd, I'd beat it and get all the Chaos Emeralds. Ooh, getting all the Chaos Emeralds. That might be a little tough for me. I've never been very successful at On that. a stream? I mean... I don't, I don't think I've ever gotten all the Chaos Emeralds in any Sonic game. I just haven't cared enough. Uh, 
Uh, do you know where where on earth you can buy buy a four gig gigabyte or smaller micro SD card these days? My DC SD media loader is a micro SD slot. Uh, and came with no card and has a, a weird four gigabyte or less specification. Yeah, I mean you probably have to go to eBay or something like that. Isn't that so weird that it's it's difficult to get uh, SD cards that, <laughs> that are smaller than than or four gigabytes or smaller? Well, well you know, in uh, uh, I believe it's I believe I used this soundbite and. Analog Frontiers episode three, you know, our, our, our TVO likes to lay down the hard truths, right? And yeah. uh, uh, there's this one part where he says, you know, he, he's talking about, you know, like, you know, will we be able to use this in 20 years? Will we be able to use this? He says, he says, will you be able uh, to find, he, he, said, he said, tell me, how easy is it to find a, a MF card? Tell me, how easy is it to find a SD card that's less than two gigabytes? Is it easy? <laughs> 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 the way he said, is it easy? <laughs> and it's 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 not. It's no, it's true. He's right. You know, just like he was talking about in this episode about like, you know, people think that it's done when you've got an emulator. We're good to go, but. You know, your first N64 emulator was made to run on a 3DFX Voodoo card. <laughs> that wasn't very preservable, now was it? <laughs> <laughs> it's it is it is crazy. I'm so happy that that we had that we interviewed our team. I know, it's, like that's something we were not going to do at first. Well, we didn't think it was going to be like he, we we thought about it. We were like, like, could we possibly travel to Mexico and interview him? Because like. That would be incredible, but then we kind of thought like, well, just like for budget reasons, we should like keep this one to travel within the U.S. only. And, right. you know, we were able to meet him at that event last year, and that was incredible. And, uh, yeah, like it's, it's hard to imagine it without him at this point, but... We, we wanted to, we always wanted to put them in, but it was just like, man, I just don't know if it's, it's really possible, but it's, it's so amazing that he's in it. I mean, just yeah. absolutely incredible. Yeah. And I think it's so funny too, that it's in Corey's old house. He doesn't live there yeah. anymore. And I, I don't know if anyone could tell, but in part of the stuff that we put in the background behind him, one of them is Corey's snatcher vinyl record soundtrack <laughs> which is, yep. is very appropriate <laughs> yep I mean it was I, I'm very very grateful that we were able to interview him for it because I mean it's just it's, it's nice to be able to have him bring more attention to the work that he does and he's, he's like the nicest nicest guy like I think I've oh like he is like you know, if, if you were to just, like, look at any of the uh, B-roll that you shot of him, like, talking to people at the event, like, there is this look in his eyes that just says, like, I am genuinely listening to you, and <laughs> what you are saying is interesting and important. Like, like I've yeah. never seen, like, someone... I've never met another human being that is like so genuinely interested in like you and what you have to say. Like he is just so, he is like the yep. most exemplary human being that has ever lived. Like <laughs> he is just the best. Our TVO is the best. Yeah. That is a really good way to put it though. You know, he's always, he is, he's, he is filled with compassion. You know, he, he he wants to listen. Yes. He is listening. He is. <laughs> um, I use my two gb SD card for my original 3DS, and my I mean that's sometimes you just gotta have like a weird workaround like that. did have a truck sensor. 
Yeah. Of course, it did have the the bomb skull. Yeah. And then he was wearing the Snatcher shirt on the day we did the interview. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, what what an incredible thing to have gotten him. And I mean, he looked over all the scripts before we even thought it was we were going to be able to interview him. And then, like, I just, I can't imagine not not having that interview now. I mean, it just turned out so Because you so had it well. written already. I did. Without him in it. And it, he fit in so seamlessly. And he just, yeah. he adds such a level of class and intelligence to it, I think. Not to say everyone else didn't, but he has a very, I, I feel like he has a very. He's just very good. At, he's very good at speaking and explaining things. Yes, he's very he's good at like, things, like. Like things from a different point of view that you'd never really. Think yes. About. He thinks about things from a very academic point of view, I feel. And especially with like the, the perspective of, of preservation, he just like just has it in his head in like just a really comprehensive way. It is such an honor to have him in it. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, I think the, the next two will probably be over an hour each. I, I didn't I didn't love my voiceover for it. Like, I didn't like my delivery I, that much. I, 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 I recorded that like a long time ago, and I was... I thought it was... It was just as I was getting settled in, I think, and set up and... I, I thought it was actually quite good. I mean, I, I have a similar reaction. I, I've said before, like, when you edit something that I voice, like I never yeah. like how I sound in it. I think it's just because like you got, when you're editing your own voice, you just get used to how you said things. So you just, right. It doesn't bother you anymore. Yeah. And yeah, it's, like, it's totally. And I, I, I thought you did a good job with the voiceover and there, there were all some saliva clicks that I was nervous about, but like the last day of work that I did on, I went through, i I learned how to delete saliva clicks in Adobe Audition, and it was really easy. Uh, so that was that was most of what I was doing. Um, I didn't worry about for interviews because interviews are like supposed to be natural sounding, but like the the VO, like I went through and got rid of all the saliva clicks, and uh, I was really pleased with how that came out. But I thought your VO was good. A, a, a uh, saliva Mr. click. Burke, I'm just asking, uh, what is a saliva? Click? So, like, when the microphone is close to your mouth, like, just naturally, sometimes there's just like little bits of like saliva in your mouth that just make a little click sound. You're not gonna hear that in like, you're not gonna hear it in like a video game or a movie or anything like that. Um, and you know, we're we're not exactly audio engineers over here. Um, right. Yeah, you know, we do our we do our best. Um, you know, I, I got Joe Redifer to help me with a lot of the audio presets for the different interviews to make sure everyone like sounded good and punchy enough. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, yeah. So, but you know, th there was sometimes it like for me like sometimes I get a lot of them and sometimes I don't. And I think it has a lot to do with that, just how close the microphone is to your mouth sometimes. Yeah. Um, and <clears throat> sometimes, like sometimes it's just all over the place and I, I, it annoys me. But for a normal episode, I don't worry about, I worry about a little, but not that much. But for a documentary, I tried to have them not in it. And so I was really happy I was able to get those removed. Yeah. But uh, it, it, um, uh, sounded and I, I thought your vo was good it was it was it was good and for people who haven't seen the entirety of uh joe's how to clean your stupid games video you need to go and watch it's it it's like the funniest thing on youtube <laughs> uh, well the funniest thing after the final fight df retro intro 
<laughs> and and the ending to the final fight, DF Retro. That's that's pretty good. But yeah, how to clean your stupid games is so funny. I think there were a few people who like took it seriously. I know in the like, comments, like like what kind of tip is used in sandpaper? <laughs> <laughs> Be sure to use the spot free wear it rinse as we don't want spots on our game now, do we? <laughs> I, I thought it just like edited into that whole segment like so perfectly. Yeah. I was so proud of how it worked. <laughs> even, I mean, he's told me when he watched it, he's like, oh, I forgot that that was even going to be in there. <laughs> what did he think of it? Like, how it oh, he liked out? it. <laughs> I should, uh, are we going to re review the, the new mini EverDrive Pro? Uh, maybe, maybe I do. I am planning on doing a, an EverDrive update video that's going to cover, ideally it's going to cover like everything that's come out since the last EverDrive video, like all in one. Uh, I have no idea how long that will be, but I mean, it's, uh, I mean, even with stuff changing with the SD SNES rapidly, uh, there's a lot of stuff to a lot of stuff to cover. Um, and I would love to show the 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 Mega EverDrive Pro in there. So we will we will see what happens. Um, but so like th my my priority going forward is yeah, I'm going to do this GBS control and I really need to I know it's like more documentary stuff but I really need to really am excited to just do something now with that electronic gaming monthly footage that we shot and just need to cut it into a documentary so that might be my next thing I do because I, I feel very passionate and excited to work on that and I don't think it's going to be something that's going to be out of control long to do I just I put it off for so long. I mean, for for various reasons that I'm I really won't go get into here. Uh, but I've decided, you know, I'm just gonna do it. I'm just gonna do it. Whoa! Oh yeah, that. yeah. Uh, are we gonna review Woozle's uh, upcoming uh, Neo Geo Pocket consoleizer? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm super I, that. yeah Game that's... Gear. Like I have I have the uh, the Mick Will screen in mind that has the the, um, the VGA out. I'm interested though because I don't other than right. I, I don't have like an original hardware way to play Game Gear right look at look at like the scrolling of that like central like purple chamber behind the table like there's there's a lot of very subtle layers of parallax that make it look yeah. like really 3D <laughs> Um, but yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm excited for the Neo Geo Pocket. I mean, I, did he say if it's going to be HDMI or not? I, I don't know. I, I, I didn't look very closely at the details, uh, but I, I noticed that there was a VGA on the, on the Game Gear one. So I don't know if there's an HDMI at all. I don't know. But I think that, I mean, if, if it's if it's not HDMI and I can just like add it to my system, I, I will definitely just do that. My microphone is completely in my face. I'm gonna go fill up my water here. Question: If you get a Pioneer uh, PDP V402 43 Plasma TV, would you make a video on it? Um, I I'm not sure if, if making a video like on a specific TV is something that like we would probably do. But it would definitely play a role in you know f future it's episodes if it's something we had access to. Right. 
Speaking of which, we got an email from somebody uh, that has a super rare CRT oh. and is located here in Kentucky. Oh, wow. It is the uh, the 28 HD 96 Carmack monitors. It's the 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 famous. Um, it's 28 inches, 16 by 9, with maximum horizontal scanning re frequency of 96 kilohertz. Uh, there are larger presentation presentation CRT TVs, but nothing else this big with a resolution like this. Um, it is the. It is the monitor used by John Carmack during the development of Quake. Wow. That's pretty wild. You yeah, mean it's like so the I, same I, one I or the same model? <laughs> uh, it's the same model. But the thing is, is apparently it says, um, currently there is nobody else publicly known to own this monitor. Wow. That's wild. Uh, and apparently this person lives three hours away from, from me. So what, what, what does he want you to do? Uh, I mean, I could go down there and shoot something on it. I don't know. I mean, just maybe just like looking at it. Like, isn't this cool? Yeah. I, mean, I don't know. About, lives about three hours away from me. Oh, actually, Michael's work, workshop owns ten of them. <laughs> really? No, no, I don't think so. Oh. <laughs> I mean, I wonder if it could be, like, I mean, that might be, that might be fun. I mean, it seems like people, something that people would be into, right? Maybe I'll, I'll respond to him. I, I'm like really backed up on email. So I wonder if this is all on one screen. I wonder what I, know what's, I wonder what's on the second screen. Yeah, it's a, it's a very different world map from the main game. And I think Plague of Shadows world map was very similar to the main game. Hey guys, I would love to love to hear what you both think about the RetroTink branded or endorsed component cables. I spotted them on the site where the Rad 2X cables are sold. Uh I mean we we have I'm I'm sure that they're very very good. I, so, I mean we yeah, have I mean I haven't I haven't heard of them. Yeah. I was I, I mean was we haven't even used the Rad 2X yet either. Yeah, we don't have one. Or multiple ones. One for each. The various systems. But Bob, Bob has done a very good job in, in covering those. So I'm not sure how much how much we'd have to have to add. I'm gonna go fill I'm gonna fill up my water. Right. I'll be right back. Doing too good in this fight. <laughs> the bosses do seem to give you a lot of opportunities to get hurts, though.
Oh no! See, there was uh, $5 from David Denuzio saying, how is geometry looking on your PVMs and consumer sets? I have a consumer Trinitron KV 27 FS 120. It's gorgeous, but the flat screen geometry is subpar. Um, the geometry is not perfect on my Toshiba. My PVMs are, for the most part, pretty good. Um, uh, I mean, it's, to be honest, I try to not think about geometry too much. Uh, when I got my, um, when I, when I got my HD CRT back in 2004, must've been 2004. Um, like I immediately noticed that in 2D games, the it was like the image was like moving on like this wavy ribbon and it drove me nuts and it was kind of making me feel disappointed and I kind of trained my eye to not see it like I feel like before I was just kind of looking at the whole picture and I kind of retrained my eye to look at like points in the action instead of like the whole thing. And I found that like when I'm focusing on the individual sprites, I don't see the geometry issues as much. So I, 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 I mean, geometry is not going to be perfect on any CRT. So I kind of feel like an approach like that, where it's like, I'm not even going to focus on that is, is the path to happiness. <laughs> what I miss. Uh, I read a donation about CRT geometry. If you had anything to add to it. Uh, yeah, I mean, a lot of times I don't notice it anymore. Oh, or it takes me a, a, a few minutes to just move on from noticing it. Oh, nice. Well, this is probably something you can elaborate more into. Uh, from Ben Brody saying, $5, but you have to tell us about your favorite episode of Mythbusters. And why, <laughs> why it was your favorite. Oh, man. Uh, it's... Like nachos with chicken and guac on them. Nachos, nachos with chicken and guac on them? You know? What are they? Like like, like a um, like a loaded nachos type thing? Like that sounds, sounds solid. Um... Gosh, it's been so long since Mythbusters. Um, I barely watched any of it at all, even when it was new. I, I, I watched quite a bit during college. It was like the one show I watched on TV when I uh, moved into my apartment after college, and I was eventually like, why, 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 why do I? Why do I have cable? <laughs> I gotta watch one show. Um, gosh, let me think. It's you think about that. I I'm gonna read about the uh, you know, the uh, the six dollars and sixty six cents we got from Canadian six dollars and sixty six cents we got from Powerhouse nineteen ninety six. Thing you guys see or play the Indivisible NES uh, remake or demake or whatever. Whoa. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hmm? <laughs> uh, I, I will... Re I will... After, I will... I'll read that donation after. Uh, 
Did you, uh, I mean, I've not seen the Indiv Indivisible NES. Yeah, I haven't, actually, I haven't played the main game yet. No, I actually, I just bought. I have a code for it on, I, I have it on PS, uh, PS4, though. I haven't, I haven't tried it yet. I've meant to. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Um, First good. I, I, just, I just bought it, bought it retail, because I've heard it's becoming difficult to find. Oh, really? Well, I, yes. I should probably do that, too. What system did you get for uh, PS4. The, the Switch version, I guess, is out, but they didn't even know that uh, it was even coming out. <laughs> I guess it's like not not great. I, I knew. I think that they knew it was coming, but it just did not was not uh, optimized well. Yeah. Anyways, we got we got we got one hundred dollars. From, from Nick Mueller. Nikolaus Mueller? Thank you. <laughs> wow. Thank you. Saying my catch-up contribution since I deleted my Patreon. Also, I'm going to be <laughs> I'm gonna be Kanye's running mate. Please vote for us. <laughs> well, I I mean, I'd, I'd, I'd vote for Nick. <laughs> but I would, would, would not vote for Kanye. I, I will not. <laughs> thank you, sir. But thank you, thank you. It's it's it, and it's it's great to great to see you. Here. Yeah, it's been a while. It's great to see you. It's been a little while, but I mean, it's I mean, it is it's, it's, it's great to see you around. I mean, I can't even think. That, I mean, it's been a few months since I think we've seen you in the chat. Yeah, definitely been a while. It's it, there's no no reason to apologize. I mean, even even busy. I'm sure. Hopefully you've been been healthy. Have you been? I don't. Have you been uh been been running a lot? Staying staying on top of your running. Uh, we got we got two dollars from Ben Brody, Thank saying uh, my my fave is when they did the car chase stuff. I assume that that's that's in terms of Mythbusters. Yeah, gosh, I I wish I could remember any Mythbusters episodes better than I do, but for some reason when I'm put on the spot here, I just I can't I can't think of them. <laughs> Well, Nick, if I, if I ever find myself with an extra Sega CD, I'm, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna send it to you. It's gonna show up one day. But thank you for that. That is enormously generous. Of you. Thank you. Thank you. Of like really any Mythbusters that I gotta be honest. I gotta be honest. I mean, I think it was just on a time where it was just that was not something. I'm, I'm more of a Mr. Wizard's World guy. <laughs> I'm, I'm about the age where Mr. Wizard's World was my myth. Well, it's not like Mythbusters was a kid show or anything. No, 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 no. <laughs> but I mean, it, it, it was just on at a time where I didn't really watch TV basically at all. I mean. I mean, in, in a lot of ways, I mean, I've never been a big TV watcher. Like, even as a kid, like, I, I had my cartoons that I watched, but didn't watch a lot in general outside of that. Um, and so college was, like, probably the age where I was watching TV the most. Um, just because, you know, my, my roommate, you know, had the shows he liked to watch, like Mythbusters was one of them. So, you know, that was, we watched Mythbusters all the time, but gosh, I mean, that's, it's getting to have been a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> ben Brody also likes the lead balloon episode. Nice. I don't remember that one. 
I remember the one about like myths about like uh, there, there was one about like uh, do you get better gas mileage by leaving the tailgate of your trunk down of your truck down Did they ever do one on you getting you get more wet if you run in the rain versus walking in the rain? That seems like something oh. I feel like I've heard being an, an episode of it. Oh, I don't know. If, if you run to your car in pouring rain, you actually get more wet than you would just walk into it. <laughs> That's an interesting question. I mean, they, they've yeah, done a cool. lot. They did a lot of like movie based ones like. Uh, you know, uh, d does diving underwater, like, actually, like, a good way to get away from bullets? <laughs> if I remember right, the answer was, was, was yes. Like, uh, I think. W one, of one, one of the ones, one of the ones. Less wet walking. One of the ones I remember was, uh was about uh, pirates. Uh, I mean, there, there was like a whole episode on, on pirates. And one was, one one subject was like, you know, why do pirates wear eye patches? And, you know, they, they, they determined that if you're raiding a ship, you, uh, and you keep one eye covered. I, I don't I don't know if this has any like basis in historical use of pirates and eye patches, but they did determine, regardless, that uh, uh, if if you you know have one eye covered and then you know raise it up, like if you go from like a bright area to a dark area, that you've like kept one eye like away from the light. Like if you were to go into, you know, the brig or whatever, you would, you know, you go into the underside of the ship and you can flip that up and you can, you can see what you're doing. Huh. Uh, Apple Collector 86 is wondering, uh, would European Mega Master System 3 glasses work on an American? SMS console. I mean, I assume so. It's probably up to the the system to to set the the, the, set the frequency. Refresh. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, man, that's the first time I died and didn't get my stuff back. Uh oh. <clears throat> I'll tell you, yesterday. There was always like that thing growing up where people said, or at least my 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 grandparents would always tell me, you know, if you eat carrots, you can see in the dark. Well, they they say you know carrots are good for your eyesight, which I honestly have no clue how true or not true that is. How how much of a truly tangible effect it has <laughs> on your eye health. Well, I mean, I use it as a thing. Yeah, you know, I've been trying to use stuff like that to like get my kids to eat certain things. Mm -hmm. And I said, you know, you, you know, if you if you eat carrots, then you can you can see in the dark. <laughs> like, I wonder what other kind of kind of superpowers you get from eating certain things. Mm. And you know, we just happen to be having uh, beans as well. So I was like, well, let's. Gives you, gives you the power of flatulence. Yeah, I bet Monty was all like, wow, I want to eat beans now. Well, he was like, at first, I mean, they didn't know. Like, what's, what is that? And this is the part that blew my mind is that apparently like my my wife had never heard that. And my, my, my wife has never heard the beans, beans, the magical fruit. Well, she like never heard like the association. Yeah, like, never heard that before. She's like, no, I've never heard that before. That's that's wild to me. <laughs> I know. <laughs> right? Like uh, that's that's like 
Sweet like, bean? I probably knew that before I'd ever eaten a bean in my life. <laughs> <laughs> it's a magical fruit. Uh, we, we, we got a $5 donation from Mr. Seabass saying a second donation comment on tap. Did you... Did I miss one earlier from you? I, I apologize if so. I can scroll back down and... and uh, I apologize. Any, co uh, any comments on the free DVD boot PS2 exploit that was announced and published last week? Um, I heard a I'm, little bit about it. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's pretty exciting. I'll be excited to see what actually comes of it. I mean, do they have to... Can it just be, like, used as a bootloader? Or do, are they going to, like, use it to patch it into into games also? Where it just, like, loads it automatically? Like they do with, like, Dreamcast games. I mean, if, if so, that will open up a lot of possibilities. For, like, homebrew or just, like... <clears throat> I mean, even original games, you know, like getting physical releases and stuff. Um, I mean, it'll be interesting to see if anything happens with a possible ODE for the system, because in many ways, just like having the like the hard drive loader makes it less appealing, I bet. So it's less of a big deal. Oh, second attempt means I tried tried before the YouTube app crashed. Right. Oh. Uh. What if you eat Vin's beans? I don't know. <laughs> Vin's beans. It opens a door to a alternate universe. Where everyone speaks and farts. That's what happened. But you know, it's it's funny though. I once I told that the mom he he ate he ate all those beans, <laughs> and he like was going back for more. <laughs> like, I can't wait. Did, did did he feel like it worked? Uh, I mean, he, I don't know. He moved on to something else <laughs> after that. <laughs> so, Five dollar donation from from uh, for love of the game. Same bins beans, the fantastical fruit. The more you eat, the more it's moot. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's pretty good. There, that is. That's that's very good. <laughs> Thanks for stopping, Nick. I'll see you well. soon. Hopefully. Thank you again. There's a lot of levels in this. Like... Yeah, I, I I don't fully have a grasp on the, the structure here, but it's it's a lot like Plague Not Plague uh, Plague Knight's campaign was much more of a a remix. I, ha I had a a unique story that was kind of cool because like you could see Shovel Knight like. Right. It, it was it was almost like kind of running it like in parallel. Have I been here? Is that the airship level? Or are you flying the airship? Propeller Knight's level in the original had it was my favorite song. My my favorite was Plague Knight's level by far. That um, that was one of the ones by uh, Matsumai. Oh really? Yeah. Which one was not? Or the Plague Knight was? Plague Knight. I, I well wait a second. Was it? 
Yeah, I think it was. I think it was... I think it was Plague Knight and um, Treasure Knight were the ones that she did. But Jake, Jake Hoffman did the soundtrack for this one, right? He hasn't been doing too many games. Yeah, I don't think I don't, I don't think he has. Um, I mean, there there's some music in this that I haven't heard before. But um, you know, a lot of it is just from the original. Yeah, five dollar donation from Jumada. Thank you. Saying here's a little coin in the coffer for all that hard work on Analog Frontier. Yep, that's good work, y'all. <laughs> It was hard work, and will continue to be so. But you know, I, I, I keep, I keep thinking, you know, like, it, at some point during the production of part three, like, it's, it's gonna be half over. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I mean, the idea is. For three and four to be out in the same time span that it was was between one and two. That's that's what I'd like to hope for. I think four, even though four is going to be one of the longest ones, I think it's going to be one of the easiest to make. Right. Because so much of it relies on footage we've already shot. Like there was just yeah. with the first two episodes, there was a lot of footage that needed to be shot at home. You know, I used right. as much as I could from, you know, the actual places we went. But, you know, some of it I've got to save for later episodes, you know. So, But yeah. I I also kind of decide when I e edited episode one, like, I'm not going to, like, I don't want to reuse any shots within an episode. But I'm not going to, like, be super hard about, you know, hard-lined on never reusing a shot between any of you. I mean, they're separate episodes. Oh, you know? yeah. Totally. But in general, you know, I want to show new stuff as much as I can. Uh, Chris Fox says, Analyze Frontiers was incredible. Thanks again. The quality in your work is impeccable. Impeccable. Thank you. We got a $2 donation from Blade Boy. Oh. Finally hacked my PS TV. Thanks for the video. I would like yeah, to do I'm that very soon as well. I actually. After the episode came out, I bought a, um, um, a I forget bit. if it was 128 or 256, but I bought a, a little USB drive to, uh, to make do with that. Mm. Oh, Booker Press has a, has a good question. How did you arrive at the name Analog Frontiers? Uh, for a long time, I was, I mean, to be honest, like episode one was like, I mean, I, we didn't come up with the title until January. Like it was either halfway or mostly edited, uh, before, before we finally settled on name. I mean, we'd been, you know, trying, we'd been calling it the modern doc. For, even though it was a series, like, it was kind of like back and forth. Like, when we first um, thought of it, we were like, this is a series. And then we were like, well, maybe it could just be one giant thing. And then it went back to series. Um, we just called it the Modern Doc for the longest time. And I was just so scared of committing to a title. And for a long time, I was saying, I think it needs the word retro in it. Like, even though I'm trying to avoid the word retro in mm -hmm. scripts, because we, like, Shovel Knight. Shovel Knight is retro. Retro, like, a proper technical definition of retro, as far as I can discern, is something that is a throwback. Shovel Knight is a throwback but it wasn't made in the era that it's trying to evoke nostalgia for. 
And uh, really quick, yeah. really quick, I want to say that uh, for love of the game, it's saying, will you upload the full Analog Frontiers theme? And you can actually get it directly from the source. It is the third song on uh, our good friend uh, Matt Michesky's, uh single that he released for one of the songs that he did. Ah. Uh, and you can get it right at that link there. It's the third song on there. And it, it is available for, for pay, name your price, so you can, can do whatever you would like. Yeah, Smoke Monster Classic is a, is a good word. Um, I, I've used that a lot in the scripts. I, I, I've used classic, vintage, you know, um, maybe even throwing an old school gaming in there once or twice. Um, and, uh, but the fact of the matter is people use the term retro. And I guess if you think about it in a sense, like playing games today, like outside the era that they were made for, made to be played in, that is a throwback in its own sense. So you could say you are a retro gamer or whatever. People just call it retro. We're not afraid to call it retro in normal episodes. I mean, in everyday conversation, I'll say retro. Um, but I don't think it's proper. And, you know, I for documentary writing, I, I try to elevate it just a little bit more. Um, and, uh, so anyway, for a long time though, I thought, even though we're trying to not say retro in the scripts, I feel like retro needs to be in the title because I feel like people won't know what it's about if, uh, if we don't have the word retro. In there. Then later I thought like, well, what about analog? Analog is a cool word. And even though, you know, video games aren't necessarily analog in and of themselves. And even though the series isn't about analog video output, strictly speaking, I do think that sort of the commonality of most of what we're talking about are the systems that have analog output. Because when we're talking about preserving these games, we're talking about games that were designed for analog output. And once you've gone to HDMI, like we're not really concerned about preserving the look or the presentation of those games. Now, pre preservation of those systems may be a concern, and it, you know it came up a little bit in Analog Frontiers Part Two. But I thought, you know, let's examine using analog instead of retro. And I went through my, I, I was thinking of all these different words like I could mash up with retro, either is analog or with analog. Either analog is the first word or analog is the second word. And so I thought, you know what? I'm going to go through my entire backloggery collection and I'm going to write down every word that like comes up in like a game title that just like strikes me. And I'm like, maybe it's a, a maybe, maybe it's a long shot, you know, but I'm still gonna put it on the list, you know? So, you know, stuff like Analog World, Analog Adventures, uh, Analog, you know, this, Analog that, you know, uh, <laughs> Analog Rearmed, you know, whatever the heck kind of titles video games have. Cause I thought, you know, well, maybe looking at video game titles would make it, feel gamey, you know? Yeah. In a good way. And one of one of uh, one of the ones I wrote down was, you know, front Saga Frontier. You know, oh, and Saga yeah, Frontier yeah, yeah. too. And I didn't think a lot of it at the time. You know, and I showed Corey the list and what was the one you were into? You were into I don't, I don't even remember. If I saw the list again, I'd probably remember. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so like one day, like, you know, after we had thought about it while we were kind of lean, maybe to one, one thing or another. Anal I think analog legacy was pretty high up there. Yeah. Analog legacy. And, um, Analog Connection was another one I was thinking about as well. Um, but I didn't want to do that because actually, let, if I go further back, what got me thinking about 
mashing it up with like a title that you might see in a video game was I did the trailer for Way Forward's uh, Vitamin Connection. And I was like, it just kind of made me think like analog connection, like that kind of works. Cause like video connections and like connections with like the people and the community and stuff. I was like, man, that sounds cool. Except I don't want to use that because like this game just came out and I just did the trailer and it would feel like very obvious I stole it from that. Uh, so I was like, no, nah, I can't do that. But then that's what got, made me look through my backlog. Um, and then like, I didn't think that much of Analog Frontier, you know, cause Saga Frontier. And then like the next day I thought, what if you put an S on the end of that? Analog Frontiers. I was like, because I said that like, it kind of indicates that even though this stuff is like old, outdated analog technology, people are still like dis discovering, discovering new, new things about it, new things you can do with it, new ways you can preserve it, new ways you can modify it, change it, adapt it to the modern world. Like it's, it is this old world of old games is still like an exciting world of, of discovery. And that was always one of the key, the core themes of the series. Right. And so I thought like that word frontiers, like is really striking me. And I mentioned that to you and you're like, I love it. So we went with it. <laughs> I was <laughs> after like almost two years of being so afraid of committing to a title. That was, that was it. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. And the, I've saga, uh, I think, uh, Saga Saga Frontier actually appeared. Uh, Saga Frontier Two. I did a I did a. Uh, and I've never played through these games. I'm, I'm I'm inspired by their names, but I've I've not played through them. Even though I think they look very interesting, and I I bought them both last year. Um, but uh, yeah, there's there's a there's a comparison, which I thought I did a really good job of setting the OSSC scanline settings by the way in that uh in that comparison i thought the the uh the ossc scan lines looked really close to yeah. the 20l5 did, did you did you notice that yeah yeah it looks great i mean the scan lines on the ossc can look excellent well they I mean, there's 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 using there's, scan lines when i was playing i uh the cps1 version of un squadron Mm. Uh, I missed her the other day as well, and I was just like really impressed how good some of those scan lines look. Like the, uh, there's like a 50% soft version looks so good on the on the mist. Uh, Not exactly what we were talking about. But. Well, I was talking about the OSSC, but the uh, the OSSC, you know, has um, has hybrid scan line options now as well. So yeah. So that, that uh, was using it. a mixture. So I thought, I, I was really proud of how I dialed that in. I probably should have saved it. <laughs> uh, we got, we got uh, $4.99, uh, $4.99 4 pounds and 99 cents. I don't know. What it's Not like. 99 shillings? Is, is that, is that shillings? I, I don't know. <laughs> from, from start select. But it's a really cool user item. Oh, yes. Uh, morning, guys. Just up and heading to work once again. Don't know if you mentioned already, right, but your thoughts on the NT Mini version 2's feature? Yeah, I mean, I, I I need to take a little bit of a closer look, but it's pretty pretty crazy, actually. Like, yeah, I mean, I feel like I feel like they are. It's such a huge like. It has to have something uh, to do with the analog eight, don't you think? Well, I, I, I don't know. I feel like they're going to do a cheaper version of it, though. But because then, I, like, people who thought that was going to be the work to put into doing that without. Uh, it's a whole lot of work just to do that and then not actually sell it more than what they did. Because and they didn't even announce any of those features until after it already sold through. Yeah, it seems like a whole lot of work. Yeah, and, and I feel like people are going to be annoyed that they didn't know about these features and maybe passed on it. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. 
Uh, that, it's, it's gonna be interesting. Like, I mean, people are gonna ask us or we're gonna look at one and I, I mean, we, I'm we very worried. doubtful that they're gonna send out review units. Yeah. And like, obviously we didn't pre-order one. So yeah, I don't think we're gonna be able to look at it as much as I would like to. I mean, it seems, it seems super, super cool, but I mean, it's, it, it's surprising. It is surprising, especially since it's, they said that it was not going to be any different, essentially. That's why I feel like there's got to be something else. I, I feel like they're going to have a version that looks, it's, it's going to be smaller. Like the, yeah, uh, I, I, like I mean, I, I, I personally vastly prefer the aesthetic of the Super NT and the Mega SG. To, yeah, same here. To the same NT here. better. It's a heck of a lot more convenient. Yeah, it, it's, yeah, it, it looks like a video game system, you know? Yeah. I feel like, I, 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 I've always said that I feel like uh, the, the NT Mini is like a shame to be a video game system. <laughs> uh, Chris, Chris Fox, I'm not sure if you saw. I mean, <clears throat> the NT Mini was it was delayed until November. Uh, Pocket probably won't be until next year at this rate. I'm guessing. Yeah, that I, I don't know. Because even the controllers, the uh, the 2.5 gigahertz versions of the controllers were delayed until I mean at least I know the Super Nintendo was delayed until August I mean I guess that's not I, let me see if the other ones are going to be shipping anything my, my teleprompter should be arriving this week though at least <laughs> when I was uh, gearing up to shoot my on-camera stuff for the Digital Foundry video, my teleprompter slid off my tripod and shattered all over the floor. That's nice. <laughs> I mean, my it, it was an, it's an older one, so it was probably more heavy than it needed to be. Uh, so, if you look at that video I shot for Digital Foundry, I actually was able to mount my phone just above the lens and if I was facing straight on, it would be obvious I was not looking directly in the lens. But if you notice in that video, I took it and I raised up the camera a little bit and tilted it downwards. So I'm kind of like speaking upwards a little bit. And that way it, it hides a lot of my my reading the, 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 the teleprompter on my phone. I think it, it came out all right. But I had to order a new teleprompter to replace that. Well, no, it's saying here, it says this item says the ABITDO SM30 2.4G wireless gamepad for original SNES. Uh, it's still coming July 15th, it says. I thought it got pushed back. Well, I'd, I'd love that because I pre-ordered it. I pre-ordered that in the... What, what about the NES one? I'm checking that right now. Yeah, they both say July 15th. I thought they got delayed. Both got delayed, or at least one of them got delayed. Oh yeah, I mean, we we both do teleprompter. <laughs> People, I mean, I'm surprised, Dement, uh, Dementium, that uh, you thought that we didn't use teleprompter. I, I, uh, that's, that's I mean, crazy. I think I feel like some people have like a negative view of teleprompters because maybe they think that like, oh, like these aren't your own thoughts, you know, or something like that. No, but I mean, there's so much information that we need to, to be deliver as quickly as possible. We are not like natural born presenters like Game Dave or anything, you know? Yeah. So like early on in the channel I, I found I found it to be very stressful. Uh yes. just like trying to get my lines out when I was on camera and um 
using a teleprompter made a world of difference. And so I just was immediately like, I don't care if you can tell. Yeah. I mean, my old teleprompter is very heavy. It was, it was, it was like a custom made thing that I, that I bought, but I can't find where I actually bought it from going back through stuff. But it was, it was a pain in the butt. So this one that I got, I mean, it's, it's a lot lighter and will be easier to set up and pull down. You don't, you don't think that we're not... You can't actually believe that we're not scripted. We are, we are extremely scripted. Wait, wait. Who said we we, we didn't sound... Uh, for, for, love, for love of the game is saying... Oh, I, th I think he's joking. How could you betray us? He's joking. Well, I think that we've just gotten better at doing it. Early on. I mean, since... since we started doing it. I mean, there's a lot of people that say that I like move way too much when I'm speaking, and it's. You know what? You know what I I noticed was people were saying uh, in the comments on uh, on the DF Retro video that that oh look John's movie is his head around more and using his hands more. You know he's learning from Richard. <laughs> 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 and you know it, it made me happy that people. Could watch Digital Foundry and you know say that and, and what what came across is a a good natured ribbing like in, in the sense that they they kind of enjoyed that part of the presentation was the impression I got which yeah. you know usually when we get those comments it's in a very negative way like I can't say how much these guys move it's like do you do you want us to like look completely bored like, and have no enthusiasm for what we're saying or something? Like, would that make you feel better? <laughs> but even now, I mean, I teleprompt the stuff on when I'm on camera. But I, I'm doing all of my just voiceover when I'm not on camera. I'm just, I'm using this, this microphone. Yeah. I, I just, I, I've been recording directly to my timeline. It's been relatively recent that, um that we've been doing, I mean, the past like year or two that we've been, um, not doing like the entire episode as if it could be on camera. Right. Like for a long time, we recorded the whole script on camera and we decide in editing, like when are we on camera and when are we not? And, uh, you know, my, my whole thought behind that was, to keep audio consistency, but it really is a lot easier to do them separately. And it's not that big of a deal. It's not that big. You know, I decided it wasn't that big of a deal because you know, I, uh, you know, I I don't really watch TV ever. But you know, whenever I'm at my parents' house, you know, I'll see my dad watching. You know, you know what whatever kinds of uh, you know. Uh, he watches a lot of, like, you know, history-type shows and things like that. And, uh, I'll, I'll notice that... Um, I, I've noticed that, like, you know, the host of the show, like, is, like, clearly shooting, like, the on-camera, like, studio setup part for the episode, like, in a completely different environment from where he shoots his VO. I'm like, well, you know, if it's good enough for TV, it's good enough for Emily. <laughs> That's right. Oh, is he, like, going through his own stages? Right, right well, I think the way that it's... Like, so he's not in yeah, charge... He, he's not in charge of Pride More Keep right now. So, like, he's, like, trying to beat the guy who, you know, owns it. Oh, I can send the right. rat out. How can I? Oh, I probably have to use that knight. No. Oh, wait, I can just do this. 
Um. But anyway, oh yeah, so I think the way this is set up, like instead of like going so far across the world, I think yeah. I think they're making more level, like more levels out of the environments that like King Knight and Spectre Knight were in. But maybe, I mean, I don't, I don't really know what, I mean, you know, like I said, Plague Knight, I was surprised looking at how much time I spent on that. Oh no! Oh, oh, did I only have one hit left, or was that a one-hit kill? No, I, I, you only had one hit left. <clears throat> oh, un undead dysfunction. I definitely don't think that <laughs> you're making fun of us. What, for using teleprompter? Yeah, I it just give it a hard, hard time. <laughs> um, it's, it's, it's more saying tell in support of us. We got a five dollar donation from uh, uh, Bobby Patterson. Thank you. Thank you. For Dreamcast, is the DC Digital better than OSSC in any way? Uh, it is. DC Digital, like it's 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 basically perfect yeah i mean, I mean the, the only thing is like yeah i mean if, if you're using the ossc like obviously you're either playing on a on a lcd or you are oh well that was I mean, you, you could technically use both it, it does allow for both oh to play on a vga monitor yeah you can play in vga and also use hdmi out to capture uh can you... but yeah i mean like like DC DC Digital is basically be all end all for Dreamcast. Like it's it's not gonna be able to be like better. Yeah. Done better, I don't think. The only thing would be like if someday there's like um, you know, like a, like an eight X version. <laughs> yeah, but I mean yes. I mean but that is that's just changing what it is already there. Yeah. But my, my plan in the future will be to use uh, DC Digital and the, the HD Retrovision cables at the same time. Because it doesn't prevent... It doesn't prevent anything. Mm -hmm. I don't think I can get those coins back. Uh, Dreamcast will, will probably be the next... RGB it's either it's between that and Wii, basically. Yeah, but I I, I think that I know, think it's going to be Dreamcast. Like just because I think there's more interest in doing the dream. There's more interest in seeing that. There so. there is, but I I still really hope that like the HD retrovision cables are either available or imminently available when we do that. Yeah. Uh, we hope to do a video on the uh, on the Polymega. I thought that was already supposed to be out, but I guess everything is happening that, that has happened. So is is the Turbo Mini is that is is it like hard to find again now? Because I know it was it was sold out everywhere for a while. We're talking, about that week. We're talking about that week. We will be talking about that week. <laughs> got that, it's got that little control. Uh, we got a $2 donation from Colin Barron saying, are HD Retrovision Dreamcast cables even real? And they are. I mean, you've used yeah. a. Uh... Yeah, I have, I have a I have, I have a prototype of them, and you if you what is it the uh, is it the games within games episode, I think where I show a comparison between uh, something on Dreamcast. I might show like 
like a an HDMI version and a analog version of certain games, like in, in Shenmue, I think. Uh, and the analog stuff was was captured with the the HD RetroVision cables, or as I like to call them, the HD RetroVision. The HD RetroVision. I mean, I'm using you're using the HD RetroVision. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm sure they're, they gotta be real close. I mean, the ones I have are, are are pretty great. I mean, I can't imagine them having anything really left to to do with them. But I think that the only issue that they have probably run into is the uh, is just manufacturing. Yeah. Uh, I didn't find them to be dark. At all in the, in the amount that I've used them. <laughs> Any update on the systems within games? I forgot what was the idea behind the systems within games. Oh, like the like the GameCube and Resident Evil, um, <laughs> the PS2 and Ape Escape 2. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> uh, there, there's, there's no update on that. I, 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 do, I had a fun I idea for an idea. episode. I can't remember what I said that it was, though. I'd mentioned it, something. Oh, that'd be a fun episode to do. But I can't remember what it is. Many games have a Vita. There's, there's a, there's a, there's a Vita in The Last of Us Part Two. Oh. There's also there's also PS3s in there. And I believe I there is a copy of uh, Drake's Fortune fortune and uh i saw i think i saw the jack jack trilogy ps2 games oh. in there as well. we're not gonna say anything else though try it try is not is not has not played it yet yeah i'm going i'll probably pick it up tuesday now the analog frontiers I, I, is done I finished it on Friday. I did see the, the Shakedown Hawaii is coming to the Wii. It's pretty, it's pretty interesting. I, I have the, the PS4 version. But I think it's, it's still pretty fun. Would that make it the, the last Wii game? I did not hear about that. Yeah, there's a. Uh, there's, uh, it's coming out on the, the Wii U and the Wii. Uh, and also, we got a uh, $2 donation from Blabler saying, Are you going to play Crash Bandicoot 4? Wink. Uh, Blabler is, uh, is working on Crash Bandicoot 4. Uh, I, 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 I'm, are you a tester on it? Yeah, I, I, I definitely would like to play it. It looks, it looks very good. It seems like a better part four than than Sonic the Hedgehog four. <laughs> I mean, I've never played that, but from what I understand, that doesn't sound very hard to do. <laughs> I like it when when series come back and have like a like a real numbered version after they stopped having numbers. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I I I appreciate when when series go to four because it seems like after the first three, they always have like some other subtitle because I don't want to have a part four. Mm. 
Yeah, I always thought it was surprising that Naughty Dog did Uncharted 4. Because, like, they've always... Even if there there have been other later sort of spin-offs of various Naughty Dog games, like, someone else did it, you know? Time Gaming is saying, love your work, thank you. I'm, I'm getting some good results from upscan PS2 with a Retro Tank 2X Pro. Could I get better results with a different scale? You're a big fan of the of the, the PS2 look on, a, on the Retro Tank. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I feel it's definitely, like, softer than what you could get, like, if you were really optimizing it. But I feel like in a lot of ways there's an argument to be made for making... Uh, PS2 softer and smoother. Um, recently, we've moved over to using a DVD-O Edge, uh, or not Edge, a DVD-O iScan Pro, which is like a analog upscaler from like 2000, early 2000s. Uh, and it has VGA output or YPBPR output over DSUB. Um, but all it does is like take input, composite S video component and output, you know, motion adaptive deinterlaced image. Uh, and what we've been doing is connecting that to the VGA input on the OSSC to send it 480i as 480p. Uh, now there is like two to three frames of input lag on that, I believe. But like right now I'm set up to where I play, uh, all those consoles on a PVM and I'm just capturing with that setup. So the lag doesn't really matter uh, in that case. And it, it does make, I think a more pleasing image. It, it is, it is sharper. There's more detail slightly um, mm -hmm. with doing that as opposed to the retro tank. But I do think there's an argument to be made for like the soft retro tank output. Like it's like if someone's main, like if anyone's main concern is like PS2 and N64, like retro, I mean, could you like do better? Maybe like the retro tank smoothing is really good. Some people prefer the smooth image. You could have sharper, but like if those systems, those kinds of systems are your main concern, like if early 3D systems are your main concern, I think there's definitely an argument to be made to, um, to go retro tink over OSSC just because that, that soft look might be, might be valuable from a certain perspective. You know, because not only is it softer just by nature, but it's also, uh, you know, it's got that optional smoothing filter, so. to put my test to rest. <laughs> uh, Aaron Welsh saying, does anyone else get irritated when someone calls DE15 D-sub or DB15? Um, I have called a D-sub. Uh, I mean, so is DE15? I mean... Different? I mean, is that... Okay, here we go. DE15. I mean, it's like, is, is there a proper way to say it? I mean, I just, I've also seen, uh, what is it? Uh, is it VGA or HD? I've seen it said like HD15. 
Yeah, I mean, and sometimes I'll just say VGA for simplicity's sake. Like, I know that's not what the port is, but, you know, your average person viewing it isn't really going to understand that, I don't think. Like, people just call them VGA. Just like when you're talking about RGB and component, like really, if you're talking about RGB and component, like you should be talking about RGB and YPBPR, you know, instead of saying component. But like components just for clarity reasons, it's just easier to say, unless you specifically do need to be talking about the actual signal, in which case I you know, will get into giant YPVPR, but uh, it, it just depends. DB Subminiature is the name of the all pink connectors that look like that. E is the size of the jacket, 15 is the number of so is there like a preferred way? Is there a preferred way I could say it and it would just be right? Everywhere? It would make everybody happy. <laughs> uh, you know, yeah. I, I, I have a bad habit of, of looking at like ports that are like the same shape and size as VGA and being like, oh, hey, look, you know, there's this thing has a VGA port, but then you like try to jam a VGA into it, and it's like, oh wait, that's like it doesn't have enough pins. <laughs> uh, we we had a, a two dollar donation from Hey You. Hey You. I never thought of a game stack partner video. Uh, I mean, yeah, I mean he's Joe's been in a few of our videos. Uh, I've been in, people might not realize this, but I, I've been in several, uh, in fact, several. Uh, whenever you see him, whenever Joe talks about an arcade game, there's a quick shot of usually of a hand putting a quarter in a arcade machine. <laughs> that is my hand. <laughs> I'm doing that. I, I shot that for him. That's not really a, a partner video, but <laughs> we were we were in a uh... and putting that quarter in the in the arcade machine. There's it's like usually either it's one or it's two 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 quarters in an arcade machine. That's that's my hand. I shot that. <laughs> and we were in uh, in an ending skit. Yeah, we were in an ending. Yep. It's just, it's just funny to say that because I'm surprised he still uses it, but I guess it's a, <laughs> it's, a it's a useful shot. I do not get any. I'm just I'm just I'm just the hand model. <laughs> Before my hang nails got all out of control. It's just something like ever since I moved, like in terms of like from moving to doing all the different work on, on the house, uh, the new house and everything and fixing up the old house before selling it and all that. Like my hands have just been destroyed. <laughs> and my fingers are just like, have been in really bad shape. Um, he probably he probably think he probably does think it is funny to use that use the same the same shot, but also it's like it's probably really easy to use the same shot, and it gets the point across without having them to reshoot it. There, there's actually you know speaking of of things we've done with GameStack, uh, the I want to say it's the second to last shot in. Uh, the Analog Frontiers Part 2 credits 
is like a slider shot of P, uh, a bunch of PS2 games in alphabetical mm-hmm. order uh, at uh, Video Game World in Huntersville, North Carolina. And uh, multiple Britney's dance beats are are there. Really? <laughs> Yeah, Sa- Sandy. Uh, Sandy's happy to be back. She's she's tired <laughs> though. She just I, I'm looking at her. I just she just woke up hearing her name. She's sleepy. She she had a good time at my parents' house though. Um, let's see. Uh, Jill Tan is saying, uh, how, did you, how did you all decide who would be Guy and Coach in that new DF Retro video? That's just how it was made. We didn't, we didn't really make any decisions. Yeah. Probably because, I, probably I thought, I I thought you were going to be Cody, actually. Yeah, I was, I was a little surprised by it, but it actually works out best because I always like to play as Guy. And, and I, I play as Cody, so. I wish I played as Hagar. I mean, I but guess I just, I, I, I'm better with Cody. It, I guess he probably looks more like it, so it made sense. Yeah, it, it was the easier edit. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, it wasn't, it just, that's just how it happened. That, that intro was just so good, though. Have you seen Richard at the end? Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's. I, I think it's the funniest part about that is the the laugh that it does after. Like, <laughs> uh, you know, it's like cuts to the it's like. It's so quick after after saying it, his laugh. Um, we got a two dollar donation from Container Seven. This it says two dollars. Two dollars. How about them two dollars? What are your two two dollars? Your 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 two cents. <laughs> two dollars. Thank you. Aaron Welsh thinks that you should end all the videos with a post-scroll Tales of Sandy short. <laughs> um, Tyler Brown thinks we should do a game buying guide video for different consoles and or video about game re- reproduction. Buying games for old consoles can turn into an extensive nightmare. It's not, I mean, doing like buying guides is definitely not like the, the kind of thing that our audience, like most of our audience, would want. Would want. Um, it'd be it would be fun to do stuff like that, but I mean, I don't even I don't follow the prices of games. Basically, like if I have something, like I stop thinking <laughs> about like what it's <laughs> like. I wouldn't call. I, I, I wouldn't call it. Like, oh, I bought this a long time ago for this, and now it's worth this much. That's crazy. But I, I mean, I wouldn't I wouldn't call it a buying guide, but. Like one one video that I've I've had in mind for years that I think would be fun to do would be like PC Engine games for non shmup fans. Mm-hmm. Like, not that I dislike shmups. I love the idea of shmups, but I just like am bad at them, so I don't play them a lot and. You know, before we need, to, we, we, need we, we do we need to wean you off that word though. I I don't I I gotta be honest I don't like the word shooter because when I say I don't like shooting games like I like lots of games where they're shooting I side scrolling shooters are one of my favorite genres like I just I feel like shooting game is is not a very clear term 
Well, it was at one point. <clears throat> A Neo Geo episode without fighting games? <laughs> yeah. I I'd be in, I'd be all all about that. But like before getting the PC engine though, like, you know, it felt like that was all people talked about on the system. But there's like so much more to it than that. Yes. What we should do this week though, honestly, now that this stuff is done, we should shoot that ad lib. Like I mean if people still want to see that thirty day music thing, we should just make a day and pick a day to shoot that this week. Yeah. I I I, I watched um I watched uh, I, don't, I didn't finish it, but I, I watched a good chunk of Joe's version of that. And it, it it was fun. It like it made me like, oh okay, like I I could feel doing this. Yeah, and it doesn't even have to be anything crazy. It just like oh, his was super basic. Yeah, I mean, I think and it'd be fun because we can kind of react to each other's choices and stuff mm -hmm. like that. And we wouldn't we wouldn't uh, have to, <clears throat> you know. That should probably be after after you do the um, GBS episode. No, how about we just shoot it this week? Well, sure, but I think it should release after the GBS episode. Okay, that's I mean that's fine. I mean, just it can go whenever it goes. I mean, I I think that it would be really fun to do. Yeah, but I I, I don't know how long this GBS video is gonna take. I know that we had talked about releasing it on the sixteenth. So, I mean, I feel like we can, I think we should plan to shoot it, like, maybe, like, later on in the week. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I just. It, 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 <clears throat> it wouldn't take, really, that much to do it. I just thought a lot of people might have been really tired of the ad libs, so I thought it'd be nice. I mean, we, we've Well, I feel like videos. something like this would be a lot more fun for an ad lib than that's, just, like, talking about a game. That's true. That's true. I mean, I think that I, I don't think it would be difficult and it doesn't have to be something that just takes away from anything else. I think that I think we're in a like kind of on a roll. And I think that would be a good way to easily put together a video. So I think we should we should you should put together the list, your list. And uh, I'll put together a list and we should shoot it later on in the week. Uh, have you put together your list? Uh, I have half of the list. Completely. Oh, okay. So, I think that would be fun. Be a nice little mix of, like, newer and older things. Mm-hmm. I, I just think something like that would go over a lot, be a lot more fun for an ad lib than just like a game review. And, it, and like, it's not gonna be some. It, I, I don't know. I just think it would be more fun. Yeah. I mean, if, if, I mean, if, we had fun with those discussions. But. Oh yeah, yeah. I know exactly. But I mean, this is like this doesn't really require like a ton of prep or anything. This mm -hmm. is just. And, and I think it would be fun because we don't know what each other is choosing. Right. Well, yeah, I mean, the list will change over the years, but I mean, and I mean, they could be, you could immediately find something else and be like, oh, I should have put this on it. Yeah, well, and, you know, just like Joe said in his, like, this doesn't mean it's my favorite example of this. It's just... It's just it, or it's not, not even necessarily the first thing you think of. Like, I just think of it like, like what, like what is an example of one that I want to share? Like, maybe I think like a lot of people don't know about this one or, you know, maybe this is an outside the box example. This is just one I want to talk about, you know? Yeah. I mean, I think that we 
could we could probably shoot it in two hours. Oh, probably less than that. Yeah. Like, I, I really liked how Joe's was... Like, he didn't really, like, get into it. Like, you just yeah, said, like, think... okay, I'm, well, I'm... Th this is the topic for the next one, and I'm choosing this. And then the, you listen to it. But, yeah. like, sh there will be a little back-and-forth reaction with us, but I don't... I don't, I don't think it like needs to be anything major about explaining it or why we thought about it or whatever. We just, I, I really like Joe's like, here it is approach, you know? Right. Well, should I, uh, you know what? I'm going to talk to this lady before before I wrap it up. Uh, <laughs> because I uh, I do have a shovel knight in me. Let's see what happens. Uh, Craig Wan, I'll probably end up buying a, a Metro Fighter Striker DC controller. Just because I feel like I'll use it. I do appreciate the offer, though. <laughs> you can say, you say that, but then you end up you get to each category and you take hours reflecting on it. And it's unfortunately seems to be the curse. But yeah. I recorded oh. something with uh, Chris from Classic Gaming Quarterly uh, on a couple days ago. They will hopefully be out within, you know, like a week or so. And it, like, I have no idea how we talked as long as we did about something as, as short. Yes, it is. So. What do you, what are you getting out? Huh? I There's like a little Shovel Knight fairy following me around now. Oh. I wonder... Oh, you got your own bow? Yeah. I wonder... I wonder what happens if I choose, like, something else. Let's pick another Let's, let's scan Tom Nook. Oh, not supported by Shovel Knight. Well, is anything other than Shovel Knight supported? Like, what else would Probably be supported? Probably all. I mean, didn't they release all the playable characters? Did they? Yeah, then they have, like, like King Knight and, like, I, Spectre Knight. Oh, I, I did not know that, actually. Or if I did, I forgot. Uh, geometry episodes are still underway for sure. Yeah, I mean the geometry, uh, the geometry episode uh, in Analog Frontiers Part Two. Um, you, you might have noticed uh, that uh, uh, Steve from the channel Retro Tech. Uh, appeared several times and that footage was shot in February uh, and but while it was very 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 handy for Analog Frontiers Part 2 uh, the main reason I actually shot it was for the Geometry episode which there, there is a lot more footage where that came from so um, yeah so it's it's closer than it has ever been No, it was not at Bob's uh, get together. Uh, although Steve did appear in, in uh, one or two of those shots that were at the end of the video. <clears throat> well, is that going to do it? I think that will do it for tonight. Yeah, that was this, when was the last time 
Your we, Wii U has been turned on. Um, I uh, I did turn it on like at the beginning of uh, quarantine to uh, to take a screenshot of of the amiibos of me drum and drum Lin and the everyman there uh, <laughs> to put on uh, the the webcam slot. Since Drum and Lynn weren't coming over for the streams anymore. Oh right, right. So I put I put I put our amiibo there. Like, have we like I guess we streamed DuckTales Remastered. I'm pretty sure I played the Wii U version when we streamed that. What's that? What is that? What's uh that's that's the demo for um you can't, I can't move the cursor when it's on the screen. That's the fatal frame demo. Oh, I see. Uh, what else do I got on here? Oh, I can't, I can't send like when I go inside a folder, I can't send it to the TV. Oh. But yeah, have we ever streamed Wii U other than, uh, other than Ducktales? I don't think so. It's a shame me versus gone. Oh, has it been completely re removed from the being able to access it from the OS too? Oh, oh yeah. I mean, uh, like this, oh, this right it, here, like, see, it's just the generic, it's just generic. Like it, even if you click on the Meverse thing on the bottom, like the people, like what does it show? Uh, let me see what happens. Um, capture card episode. I'm not sure if we there, had any plans to do like a real. The Meverse service has ended. Thank you for your interest. <laughs> 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 it's actually surprising they like left it there yeah I'm surprised so yeah there's, there's the Wii U for you off stream yeah. Wii U some other time again yep yeah. No, a couple of years. <laughs> Maybe. Oh, I'll shut it off. Goodbye, Wii U. <laughs> All right, is that is that gonna do it? I guess it will. Thanks, Sandy. Why don't Why don't you? Whoa, you're oh yo, you're you're stumbly and sleepy. Come here. I'm <laughs> I'm sorry. I woke you up. I just thought you might want to say hi. You haven't said hi to the stream in a long time. Oh, look at this. <laughs> look at this pathetic, sleepy dog. <laughs> it's Anderson. <laughs> she, she got a bath this week. That's the first bath you had in a year. You, you look so sleepy. You had a big day. It's all, it all it always wears her out, even though it's like barely more than a thirty minute drive to my parents' house. It, it, it wears her out. <laughs> it's a hard life. Mm, I know. Oh, we got a five dollar donation from Craig from Craig Wan. Thank you. Um. I'd like to re request a, a virtual fist bump from you guys. I gotta show, gotta show some love before we we leave. Hold the fist towards the screen for five seconds. Can we do that? Here, Sandy's participating. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah. <laughs> Sandy's just looking at me like, 
I don't care right now. <laughs> I just don't care. Oh, sleepy dog. Oh, <laughs> she just keeps grunting. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> sleepy dog. I guess that'll do. All right. Thanks everybody who who donated and it was a lot of fun. Uh, yep. Thanks. Thanks. I'm glad everyone enjoyed Analog Frontiers. Yeah. And, and look forward to next. part three in much less time than it took to get to part two. That's right. Good night, That's everyone. Right. Good night. <laughs>